there's a couple of different things to look at to understand the climate of a region and to see how the climate um, impacts upon production. So one of the first steps in, in approaching a holistic design is really to understand the characteristics of a site well and one of the main characteristics of a site would be the climate. So that's things like the temperature, the rainfall, um, the elevation, the distance inland, um, and the wind speed and, and the number of frosts that a particular site experiences during a year. And all these factors will determine the growth of plants within that system and also the health and the productivity of the animals within that system. So matching up the plants and animals that are most productive for a particular climate is one of the, the you know, most logical and, and best first steps to be able to set up a, a really um, productive and sustainable organic agricultural system. So um, a little bit about the background for understanding a climate for a region. Um, the climate's really the movement of um, the, the atmosphere and the movement of the ocean. And there's, there's currents both within the atmosphere and the, the ocean that um, drive and influence our climate. And they result from the, une the uneven heating of the ocean and the um, atmosphere in the equator where the sun receives most, where the earth receives most of the um, heating from the sun. So when you look at the heat that the earth receives from the sun, it receives most of the heat around the equator and then um, increasingly less heat um, towards the poles, so in the south and the north pole. And what that does is it creates these currents within the ocean and within the atmosphere where as the water and the gases in the atmosphere are warmed, they rise up and then as they rise up they cool and then they start to sink down again. And the reverse pattern plays out on the poles where um, the hot um, gases in the atmosphere and the hot um, water in the oceans cools down at the poles and sinks and um, is pushed away from the poles. So that creates all these, these flows within the um, atmosphere and within the oceans which drive our climate. And, and depending upon what the particular dominant um, flows are in your particular region will have a big influence on your climate. So some areas like England, for example, would be a lot colder than what they currently are if they didn't have a warm ocean current moving past them. And New Zealand, to a large extent, particularly the South Island, would be a lot warmer than it is if it didn't have these cold currents moving past it. So in New Zealand, the dominant currents we get is, is a northwesterly wind current. So that's due to the, um, the atmosphere being warmed in the equator and then being pushed down um, south. So it's coming from a northerly direction across New Zealand. And as the Earth is spinning in an easterly direction, so as the Earth travels through space, it's spinning in an easterly direction, that takes the winds that are coming down from the north and it twists it to create a dominant northwest wind, which is what we experience as our dominant wind in, in summer and spring and autumn. But in the south, when we're getting stronger winds coming down um, from the poles, our dominant wind changes to a, to a southerly wind. So those two winds have a big impact on, on the temperatures we experience in New Zealand and the northwesterly wind keeps it quite warm and moderate during spring, summer and autumn and the southerly wind uh, cools it down in summer. And in a similar way we get um, similar patterns in the ocean. So in the summer and, and autumn we get warm northerly currents moving past New Zealand and in the spring and uh, winter, we get cooler southerly currents coming past New Zealand. And, and again, those um, ocean currents impact the temperature of the ocean and therefore the temperature of our land. So that's a bit of a background as to why we get the climate uh, we have. Um, and they create characteristic um, patterns depending upon where you are in the world. So in New Zealand, we're um, 
bordering the kind of the warm temperate and down the bottom of the south the cool temperate zones so if you're in the tropical zone of the earth you you have quite a characteristic climate you get 12 hours of, of sunlight and 12 hours of darkness and during the whole year it's it's around 25 to 35 degrees Celsius so it's quite stable in, in the hours of sunlight and the hours of darkness and it's also quite stable in its temperatures but the further you go away from the tropics the more extreme the changes get as far as um, how light it is in summer and how dark it is in winter and also how cold it is in winter and how hot it gets in the summer so in New Zealand uh, we're not too far away from the equator we're about um, 25 to 35 degrees latitude so uh, in that range of latitudes we, we kind of go into the, the quite warm temperate climate so the Mediterranean climate and then down the bottom of the South Island we're getting into the cool temperate climates which is more like England and, and uh, southern Europe and, and what it's, the temperatures are like um, and what, what it does is you're moving away uh, towards the poles is it creates more extreme um, changes within the seasons. So the seasons are actually created by the tilt of the earth. So the earth isn't just up and down, it's actually tilted a little bit to the east. So when it's uh, summer, the northern part of the earth is, uh, sorry, when it's uh, summer, <laughs> the southern part of the earth is tilted towards the sun and it's receiving more sunlight and that's our summer and then as it moves into autumn it's more equal in distribution between the north and the south so um, we get more like the equator we get 12 hours of sunlight and 12 hours of darkness so that's our um, autumn equinox and then as it goes into our winter we get um, we're facing away from the sun so we get a lot less sunlight so um, we get longer um, nights and we get shorter days so these are long nights and short days and on the um, shortest day that's called our winter solstice and then as the earth continues to orbit around the sun it then goes into another spring equinox so where we get again on the, on the equinox itself, itself uh, 12 hours of light and 12 hours of darkness and then in the summer solstice we get um, again longer days and we get shorter nights so depending upon where we are in this orbit around the sun will determine what our season is and will also affect um, the temperatures and, and how much light and plants have evolved to respond to this, um, particularly in these more temperate regions away from the equator. So plants will, will flower in response to increasing day length, they will fruit as the temperatures warm up. Um, so they've evolved adaptations in, in response to this. And, and those evolutions and, and responses of the plants are, are also of importance to our agricultural production. So, these are the, the factors that affect our climate and then if we're trying to understand the characteristics of the climate of a particular location it comes down to things like how high it is, how far inland it is, uh, what is the rainfall of that region, what is the temperature of that region, how many hours the sun